shoot them through 500 miles of pure ground because they're hardly ever interact at all. They, a lot of them will survive that trip. And then we measure them again in a mine deep in Minnesota. And the difference between the types of neutrinos we measure at those points tell us things like the mass hierarchy or the difference in mass of those neutrinos. The tau weighs more than the muon and the muon weighs more than the electron, but we don't know um, how much more and we don't even know the ratio of what their masses are to each other. We just know the one weighs more than the other. So we're standing in this building right here. We're gonna go down 330 feet to the detector hall. If anything were to go wrong while we're in the detector hall, if the, if the power gets cut, stand still, count to 25. We have a backup generator for the lights, the elevators, and the sun pumps. We'll exit immediately. If for some reason we can't exit with the elevator and we can't wait for the fire department to come get us, we're then going to walk uphill, we'll disable the beam, if there was beam, um, and walk up to the target hall uh, where we exit through the target hall. Now, um, the natural rock of this area is actually limestone and shale. And after they dug the hole, they left uh, six inches to a foot of space. They put up a lot of rebar, and then they put up this shock creek. Now I mentioned before that we're below the water table. All the water that's seeping out of the rock collects in that area between the shock creek and the natural rock. And it pours out from any crack it finds or underneath at the bottom of the walls. And there's some places where we have a pipe that you actually see it exiting out of on purpose. Neutrino interact on average, you need one light year of lead. Right, so, for all practical purposes, they don't interact. You have to go through a light year of lead to interact. So, how do we see them interact? We make a lot of neutrinos. Most of them don't, but sometimes you get lucky. One of them will. We are dumping right now about half a megawatt worth of big, 120 jet particles. An average of half a megawatt of, beam of energy getting dumped into that target making neutrinos. So I told you the, the most expensive part of a detector is the digging the hole. The second most expensive part of the detector is the scintillator. You'll save a lot of money if you could somehow use less scintillator. So because they already have a pretty rough idea of the beam here, because we know how many protons are hitting the target, we can do calculations and simulations to figure out how much how many neutrinos are coming off. We don't need to fully instrument this detector, so they only put scintillator about every five planes.